Hey everyone, my name is Catalyst, welcome back to the channel, I hope you all are doing well. If you clicked on the video, you probably either A, have played the game and want to improve at it, or B, have just gotten the game and are going to be getting your first games in over the next few days and want to be prepared for what lies ahead. Now I know that some of you are coming to this video very frustrated and feeling overwhelmed by the Battlefield 2042 gameplay loop, and I just want to let you know that that's okay. This game is designed in such a way that it is very hard to succeed, even for somebody like me. It is is a game that expects you to die a lot, it is random, it's unpredictable, it's chaotic, it is designed to be oppressive, and it's hard to do well consistently, especially in comparison to the older titles in the franchise. The point is, it's not just you, but the good news is that there are ways to let the game come to you and improve your personal performance. For those of you who don't know who I am, I have been playing Battlefield competitively since around 2017 and have won my fair share of leagues and tournaments on both console and PC. I know, you don't have to tell me Battlefield Competitive has been a bit of a meme since ESL pulled its support, but still I competed with and against some of the best players in the world, so when I say that this video will contain pro tips, I mean that quite literally. These are the best tips that I can provide with the week of early access that I've played so far, keeping in mind that I am still learning the game too, and of course will update you with the best tips and tricks moving forward. These tips are going to be for infantry players primarily, so if you are a vehicle player and want some good tips, I would suggest going to somebody like Silk and watching him play. I'm not going to go too in-depth on some topics because I want to go over them separately and specifically in dedicated full-length videos, so make sure you subscribe if you end up enjoying this video and want to learn more from me in the future. This is a no-nonsense guide. I'm not messing around. I'm not going to mix my words. I'm going to be pretty blunt throughout this video. Okay, do we all have our notepads open? Alright, let's get to work then. So let's start with the movement in 2042. I'm going to be doing a separate movement guide video at a later date, but here is how the game's movement has changed since the beta, what is still viable, and in what context you should do certain movement. Movement all around has been nerfed a little bit since the beta. The slide no longer allows you to turn 360 degrees while in the sliding motion, but it still provides a slight momentum boost and changes the eyesight level in a way that is useful in a couple of situations. Bunny hopping is still a viable part of the game, as you'll see me doing at different points in the clips throughout the video. Movement as a whole, however, is now relegated to mostly map traversal, and I would only suggest using movement in gunfights in specific situations. You can bunny hop up to around 5-6 to six times in a row, but I would say that after the third hop you lose the amount of momentum needed to make the action worth doing. What is really useful, however, is using the hop to wide peak large areas and common traffic lanes. If you want to peak an open area, what you can do is slide, whip your mouse to peak the open area, and then bunny hop across to safety, as demonstrated here on these walls in Kaleidoscope. Admittedly, there were probably better locations to do this, but I don't get to choose what map I play on, so this will have to do. <laughs> now, there are a lot of pros to what I'm going to go ahead and call hop peeking. First and foremost, the animation while bunny hopping is going to make you more difficult to hit and track, and you also can scan an entire lane with lightning quick speed. I would not suggest doing this movement when you know someone is around the corner and plan to challenge them, because the one downside is that the spread in Battlefield 2042 is currently a little bit bugged so there is a higher chance that your spread makes you miss some shots on top of movement spread penalties that are already implemented into the game. If you know that someone is around the corner, the better action is to jiggle peek the corner and ADS walk so you can get the most concise spread as possible, and that's a general rule for the entire game. The only time I would suggest hop peeking with the intent to kill is when you know that person knows you're coming and is already injured. Otherwise, it's purely a tool for information and crossing open areas safely. In the event that you do see someone while hop peeking across and want to engage, I would suggest letting go of your WASDA and crouching for the best spread possible before doing some AD AD strafing. Next, a quick note about aiming on PC. For whatever reason, the developers thought it would be a good idea to base mouse settings on a controller emulator, so there are PC settings that are bugged and are being affected by controller settings, even if you're not using a controller yourself. Baranox, who is a Twitch streamer and friend that I've featured on this channel before, found out that these settings affect one another and did some testing to find out how to fix it. He does have a video on his YouTube as to what you need to fix to change your aim and make it feel a whole lot better, and so to save time, I would suggest that you grab the link in the description to his video, open it up in another tab, and watch it back, and come back so you can get your settings squared away easy peasy. Now that that's settled, let's have a discussion about how to take gunfights in 2042, and how to rotate around the map. I'm going to try and be as direct as possible here. 
previous Battlefield titles have always given you a certain freedom to go where you want and move throughout the map how you like because over time the maps were learnable and you knew how to treat different situations and knew what options were available to you and that freedom has been vastly restricted because of how much wasted space currently occupies these maps. Even if you learn a map and a flag in 2042, these maps and objectives are so open and big that it's impossible to account for everything. So a lot of learning Battlefield 2042 is learning how to control the part of the map that you're in and mitigating the amount of threats around you. You should absolutely be in the mindset of prioritizing 1v1 engagements over getting big flanks. With the sheer amount of players and vehicles on the map and with maps being so big, the big flank is effectively dead in Battlefield 2042. This is not a game that you can run and gun in. You are going to get smoked if you start running at people and or try to pull off a flank to get on aka art's top 10 plays so as i said prioritize 1v1 engagements in ways that are advantageous to you take people on one at a time as opposed to peaking multiple players at once as I said before, the key to success in 2042 is controlling the area around you as best as you can. Play smart and play efficiently. Now, a lot of people will tell you to play smart and you'll go, well, what the hell does that mean? There is a difference between playing slow and playing smart. Playing needlessly slow will get you killed, playing smart will not. So when you get a kill in the game, or when you are contesting a flag, or even in a high traffic area and no people are around you, there has never been a Battlefield game where stopping, listening, and waiting has been so useful. Now again, there is a tight nuance to it. I don't mean camping, but I mean obtaining information while holding an angle or a head glitch. Take a second to listen for footsteps, gunfire, or to look and see if another person pushes out into the open, giving you an idea of how many people are actually there. I promise you, those few seconds that you take to process information will absolutely save your life more, as opposed to getting a kill and then running around to get on a flag or try and get more kills. Which again, if you have played older Battlefield titles recently, you could get away with being more reckless in those games. Not in Battlefield 2042, there's simply too much going on. There have been times where I'll be in an area for a good 30 seconds just listening and reacting to the battle around me, paying attention to my minimap to see where players are spotting, where my teammates have died, what is going on around me, and again, to bring it around full circle, ADS walking and pre-aiming is very advantageous in this game, so if you know where somebody is coming from, or you know where they're holding an angle, or if you're on a high traffic area, it is very productive. And, of course, when you need to, use the speed in the movement system to traverse open areas and get from one controlled area to the next. Before we get into simpler tips, I do have a few comments and tips on how you should treat team play in this game, and this is admittedly going to get some of you upset, but here goes nothing. Play selfishly. Um, oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. I'm gonna be very blunt about this. You want to succeed, play selfishly. The Catalyst, you, you, you just care about kills and, and Battlefield is all about teamwork. Just, just listen, <laughs> just listen. There is so much going on in Battlefield 2042 that if you try and worry about other players, you are going to overwhelm yourself. Now, I'm not saying don't throw other people ammo when they need it, and don't throw people health when they need it. I'm simply saying don't go out of your way to do so, and don't place it higher in priority than clearing objectives and gaining kills, especially in Breakthrough, where breaking a line can guarantee an objective is won or lost. Worry about yourself and where you are in the battle and how you can best succeed as opposed to going full altruism. And to be quite frank with you, I've found that there are so many players around that especially in Breakthrough, you don't need to really worry about helping others. Players will clump up and there are enough people running ammo, health, or team-based specialists that you can focus on doing what is best for you in that moment. In other words, run with the pack, but don't necessarily die for the pack. Now on to some simpler tips. Most of you probably already knew this tip, but if you run out of ammo in your weapon and you have other ammunition types unlocked and available to you in your plus system, switching to the different ammunition types will replenish your ammo. There is an important change to how health and ammo crates work that you should know about in Battlefield 2042. Instead of being always active in their area of effect, they now disperse in timed bursts, so you can't just stand over a health or ammo crate and be continuously replenished. There is also a chance that you will miss the initial burst, so make sure that you use these gadgets when you absolutely need to, especially since now they have decent cooldown timers. 
If you find yourself in a pinch with no ammo, Angel's Loadout Drop will provide you with a complete reload of your entire kit, and as far as I know, it's the only way that you can restore grenades, without dying of course, because I don't believe they are passively regenerated or given back to you via ammo crates. Using the minimap has never been so helpful in a Battlefield game before. If you aren't used to checking the minimap often as a Battlefield player, get into that habit, because knowing exactly where people are and or how many people are there because they are firing their gun or they're marked by sensor grenades is valuable information and plays into how you will attack the situation. Smoke grenades have always been useful in Battlefield games, but they are extremely useful in this Battlefield title. If you have a more, let's say, adventurous playstyle, I would absolutely recommend running smoke grenades, especially since they provide smoke almost immediately on impact in this game. There is no delay in how the smoke pops. In the plus system, you can map the attachments that you always want on your weapon at the start of each round. You can do so by placing the attachments you want in the first slot in any tree. It's more efficient than choosing what attachments you want to have at the beginning of every life, and you can optimize your loadout based on your playstyle. Battlefield 2042 is the first game in the franchise to tell you exactly how many enemies are on the flag while you're contesting it. This is incredibly useful information in terms of deciding whether to take a fight or not, and it's changed how I approach attacking and defending flags. What I have done is learned the outer edge of all the flags in the game, and before taking a fight on a flag, I quickly step on and off to get a quick numbers count to see whether or not I can take the fight or not, and this is extremely useful because more often than not, people will not be paying attention to how many people are on the flag so you can quickly step on and step off before people even realize that you're there. If it's more than I think I can handle, check the minimap to see if there are teammates nearby. And if there are no teammates nearby, it's up to you as to whether or not you think you can take the flag by yourself. Some observations, if you see two players magically appear on the flag at the same time, it's most likely a hovercraft and you should run. I would not take an engagement in which you're outnumbered by more than three people or one hovercraft. And my last tip today would be to try and play with a friend. Battlefield 2042 is extremely punishing to solo players and the game is simply more fun with friends. I don't think it should ever be that way in which you need to play with your friends to have fun with the game. It should always be playing with your friends because the game is fun as opposed to playing with your friends to make it fun. And that's the video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a longer one. If you enjoyed it and learned something useful, drop a like and leave a comment if you made it to the end of the video. It helps me tremendously in the algorithm. If you enjoyed it just that much, you should consider subscribing and turning on post notifications as I will be making more guides on the game and will be making tons of 2042 content moving forward while the game hopefully earns the fixes that it needs. I stream four nights a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday on my Twitch at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Once once again, thank you all for watching. My name is Catalyst, and I will see you all another time.